Hello everyone. Recently I have encountered pretty challenging problems under the topic of numbers and as of both the allocated programs and our progress remains low on count let's try to complete all the programs under the topic of numbers as soon as possible. All right. Now let's dive right into the question. This particular problem statement is both a lengthy and tricky one but let's try to complete this one. So the question states that we are an employee in a particular channel and the channel decided to provide allowances to the customer who satisfy particular condition which is specified in the question. Therefore the condition which we require to filter from the given input statement is that the customer should be born on or before 22nd of July on the year 1987 and the month of the date of birth should be of 31 days. So we are given with an input specifying the date of birth of a particular individual and the date of birth of each individual constitutes of three values which is the date, month and the year of birth. Therefore we have to consider this as a single value of date of birth using the split function which we would use to classify each array element and configure them individually as a general approach. And after we had classified the date of birth of each individual, we have to print the index positions of the values which have passed the test conditions provided in the problem statement, else we would print minus 1. And in order to obtain a better clarity to understand the question, you may refer the given input and output sample test cases associated with the problem statement. And now let's proceed to the coding part. In the beginning of the coding statement, let's declare a definition in order to convert the given three values into one complete array statement which holds the date, month and year of the given individual. In order to do so, we declare a for loop in the range of length of the given array up to three values as we had previously discussed that the date of both consists of date, month and year covering up to three input statements provided. Hence, we declare n as 3 in order to carefully segregate each input value and align them as a list or a tuple. And that's the reason why we provide 3 in the for loop statement. Here you may arise a question based on the reason for declaring an yield statement. Well, as you might know that the written statement is not suitable for repetitive iteration and would usually terminate in a for loop or when a test condition is passed. Thus, in order to overcome these problems, we would use a yield statement where we could conclude expected written conditions. Followed by function declaration, we initialize input statements in order to obtain the array and the size of the array elements. In the next line, we would call the function that we had previously discussed and store it as a list in order to use it for further computations. Till now, we had covered the input initialization part and now let's step into the coding section. As a precative measure, we update each array value present in the index position of the month to a uppercase. Followed by this statement, we check if the month consists of 31 days and also if the birth year is lesser than 1987. And if this condition statement passes, we insert a 1 and a hash symbol into the date of birth classifier array. If the condition of the month prevails the same and the year is equal to 1987, we insert 1 and a asterisk symbol. Thus finally we declare a for loop in order to append the index positions based upon asterisk and hash symbols. If the array is provided with the asterisk symbol then we would provide another test case and check if the month is present lesser than or is equal to July and if the day of birth is lesser than or equal to 22. Thus while both these test cases are passed we would append the index positions of the array that is the value of i. You might be aware that the value of i and the value of the index position should be equal in each respect to iteration. Thus by storing either of the values we would be able to yield the same output. Finally we print the index position of the list that we have stored earlier. Else we print minus 1 well. At this point you may arise a question that why shouldn't we simply pass another if condition statement rather than passing the values of hashtags and hashtags. But for some reason, I was unable to pass the test cases using those condition statements. Thus, I sorted out these insertion statements and hence we would be able to pass all the test cases and summon the code. So we have reached the end of the module and that's it for today. I hope this helps. Thank you for spending your time and we will meet soon in another video.